Y'all know what time it is. It is the In The Scope Podcast with your boy Joshua M. Hicks, senior writer for War Media. You can check us all out on all social media platforms. You can check out this episode of the podcast of the show on Apple Podcasts, Warren Anchor, Anchor.fm, Google Podcasts, you can Spotify, you name it. We're all over the place. Tune in app. And on top of all of that, you can check out War Media on Instagram, Twitter, War Media, as well as YouTube. You can check out this episode also on YouTube. And you can also check out our website, wearelegalradio.com slash warmedia.substack.com for all the latest content and creation. And as your host, Joshua M. Hicks, you can also follow me on social media at Josh M. Hicks Media on that's for both Instagram and Twitter. And today, you know, I'm getting back to the swing of things. And I had to bring my boy on. I've been trying to get him to come on for the longest. He finally said yes. Talking about he's not an interview guy, please. Uh, Don't believe that, y'all. It's schedules. <laughs> no, I'm glad I got my boy on here, man. He's a war media uh, brother. He's a colleague. He does his thing with, the, with his, uh, his weekly columns, the Chicago Sports Exchange. And he's just all things, uh, all, all knowledge sports, but especially when it comes to the hometown Bulls and the NBA. I had to bring my guy on, Drew Holden. Drew, what's happening with you, man? Man, I'm feeling, feeling all right, man. Feeling all right. I'm getting real anxious for this, this uh, NBA season to start, um, football season to start, looking to see what the, the Sox are going to do. It's a lot of... It's a lot of very exciting things going around the, the world of Chicago sports right about now. So I can't complain too much in that regard. Yeah, that's true, man. It's, I think it's the first in time in a very long time where we had almost every sport. There's some type of hype around every sport. Like the Bulls actually have some have some fire going on with it with the moves they made this offseason. You mentioned the Sox and how Tim Anderson and, and Elo and them guys have, just, have been going crazy. Um you have the Bears now with some Justin Fields hype. And then, I mean, the Cubs, they, tr- they tanked. But, hey, I don't <laughs> – you know, we can at least celebrate the run that they had, right? Yeah. Um, so it's just it's just a lot of different topics going around within the city. But, obviously, we're basketball guys, so we're going to start with the basketball side first. Um, we are aware of all the moves that the Bulls made, getting DeRozan, bringing in Lonzo Ball. Um, Alice Caruso, surprise, and and of course now they're all under investigation. We couldn't get it together, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's always something. You think you can break through it? It's always something, right? <laughs> but there's a recent report that came out how from ESPN and how they said they, according to their writers and their gurus and experts, they think that the Demar Derozan deal was the worst offseason move. In the in the NBA, and I'm sitting here like the worst. Like, <laughs> like I understand like how you may have some question marks, but literally the worst. That's I think that's bull. I think that's bull. That's some BS. Mm-hmm. I actually love the Demar Derozan move because of what it could mean from a revamped role perspective. But as a Chicago, you know, Bulls guru, um, tell me what did you think about that report and how they how to how to um grade that type of a move in the offseason for the Bulls and what is your full opinion on whether that can actually work for this team or not uh well first off man um everybody's entitled to their own opinion own opinion of course man but um for them to label that as the worst offseason move I just think there's a lot of room for DeRozan and, and Levine and, and those guys to, to prove them wrong um, there's a lot of skepticism, a lot of pessimism out there about what they can do on the court together, a lot of talk about how they fit and how they can make it work. Um, but I think offensively, it makes a lot of sense. Um, you bring in Lonzo Ball, who's not necessarily your um, your prototypical point guard. He's not somebody who's going to be like a lead facilitator in the half court. So bringing in the Rosen is perfect because he's kind of played that role for the Spurs where – he can facilitate and he's he's gotten so much better at being a playmaker that now Alonzo Ball can kind of settle into more of the role that he's um, grown into himself, being more of a connector rather than 
the leading piece. Um, it helps to shift uh, Zach Levine off the ball some more. It, and not to mention, it's going to push uh, Patrick Williams to what seems to be his more natural spot, which is the power forward position. So I think it's going to work out much better than what a lot of the national pundits are, are saying, um, at least offensively. And to be fair to ESPN, they did also have the Bulls tied for third as um, the one of the better teams in terms of the offseason moves. Uh, so it's kind of it, it was a weird kind of juxtaposition. You got the 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 Bulls tied for third on one end in terms of the general consensus of the moves they made, and then you label them as the worst move with DeRozan. I don't know, man. I think I think the Bucks losing um, Tucker, PJ Tucker, was probably a you know quote unquote worst move. I know they were able to get Grayson Allen, but I think there's still a, a, a nice gap in between those two players and at least what they can they mean for that team's culture and that team's playing style. You know, there's a lot to be made about P.J. Tucker and bringing that dog men that mentality to that team or bringing it out of them at least. Um, you know, you talk about Russell Westbrook. As, as excited as I am to see how that looks with Anthony Davis and LeBron James, and you actually wrote a piece on Russell, Russell Westbrook's homecoming that everybody should go check out on our War Media Substack. Um, that has the potential to kind of bite them in the butt a little bit. We'll see, given that, uh, you know, there's some rumors about them being interested in Buddy Hill. So I think everything remains to be seen. We're all kind of grasping at straws right now. Nobody knows what this, this, this team or these moves in general are going to look like until they actually play out on the court. But I think that... Um, these guys are selling the Bulls and DeMar DeRozan short, really short. I agree, man. I mean, especially when you talk about what each individual player can do for this Billy Donovan offense because they don't – because people forget Billy Donovan's offense is not ball-centric. It's a lot of it's a lot of ball movement, and, it's a, and it allows freedom for offensive players to pick their spots to be able to excel – in the offense, we know Zach Levine is a score. Is a he's a three level, three four level score. He can score from anywhere on the court. But Demar Derozan brings a more two layer score aspect from the guard perspective, where he gets excel in his in, in the um in the mid range. He has extended his game two to three, so he may not be the best three point shooter, but he is a timely knockdown shooter when needed. And on top of that, just having that extra scoring playmaking ability. I believe when I was going through Twitter. There was a, a quote or a stat that uh, one of the writers uh, put out there. I can't, I forgot his name, but he said that in an alarming stat, DeMar DeRosa was one of the top players in assist to basket ratio, which yeah. means creating and playmaking for others that many pass the ball, at least straight to assist. Mm -hmm. So if DeMar DeRosa is number one in that, that's perfect for Zach Levine because all he got to do is score. So yeah. DeMar DeRosa, because this helps set him up and Zach Levine can go to work. So yeah. I don't know what these. <laughs> people are talking about man i just know i just know and believe like you said this i think this can work a lot a lot um a lot better than people really are giving a lot of credit for and putting it under billy donovan's system who is known for being an offensive guy that can work towards the player's strengths i think this is a move that could that could definitely benefit the bulls especially when you talk about like you mentioned patrick williams patrick williams you know moving him to the four to create additional space for him to take advantage of, you know, players that are not ver as versatile as he is or as quick as he is, especially with his improving offensive skill set that we've seen in the summer league. I think he could take advantage of a lot of uh, power forwards in that position. Um, what was your, what are your thoughts about Patrick Williams and, and his progression of his game that, that in the glimpses that we were able to see um, during those Vegas summer league games? I believe he only played three games, which was he was contracted to do anyways, um, but what, 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 how did you see his fit and how his, how, and his, how his game has grown in the summer league and how it could really translate to this upcoming year for this Bulls offense? Uh, so I think there was, there was a lot to like. I, I don't want to read too much into it until we actually see it on the court against um, NBA, more NBA caliber ready opponents. Um, but just the fact that he was much more aggressive offensively, uh, he showed the ability to, to facilitate. I think he shot, I want to say, above 40% from three. Um, so that, that was that was really good. Turnovers were up, but 
in some respects, you kind of you kind of do expect that because the ball was in his hands more. He was, he was more of the the go to guy on offense, which he won't he won't be this upcoming season. Um, but it wasn't so much the stats as it is just the things you want to see him do um, in terms of being more aggressive, being a more willing uh, shot taker, uh, not passing up shots. I know Billy Donovan. There was a lot that was made about Patrick Williams kind of settling for long twos. Um, and Donovan making the point to, to try to get him into the, into the mind state of attacking and, and driving deeper into the lane and using his body um, to either, you know, score or draw a foul or both. So we'll, we'll see what happens this us upcoming season. Obviously, he's not going to have much of those same responsibilities on, on offense, which I think is, is a great thing for this team because we went into the summer as fans, as observers, thinking that this guy was going to have to have, you know, uh, a monumental leap on the offensive side of the ball, where now he's not going to be asked to do quite as much, um, which will allow him, I think, to go more at his own speed. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy that, um, you know, he wants, he doesn't want to take 10, 15, 16, 17 shots a game. You know, he kind of wants to be more of that uh role-playing guy, maybe a, maybe a, possibly a 3 and D guy if he can be more of a, a willing a willing shooter. And now with, with Booch and and DeRozan and, and Ball and, and Levine, all those guys together on the court with him at one time, there should be a lot of catch-and-shoot opportunities, a lot of dump-off possibilities. Um, so now when he gets into the season, it'll be more so him learning how to cut off those guys and read what they're doing and reading what the defense is doing to uh, – better the team and, and keep him involved in the offense. That's some good points, especially when you talk about relieving pressure off of Patrick Williams to make this huge monumental leap. You can actually bring him along steady now because the offensive side, for the most part, is going to be taken care of. You can, you can actually focus on being versatile defensively and being that catch three and D guy, if necessary, for this Bulls offense to take that next level. Um, but as, as much as I want that to happen, there's another thing that I do want to happen, which is Laurie Markin cannot come back. <laughs> Laurie cannot come back, which right now he's still on the roster because of this qualifying op- because of the qualifying offer as a restricted free agent. There's been move, there's been talks about how he may be on the move to Dallas from Max Keebler. Uh, there was talks about how San Antonio was interested in him at one point in time. At this point, the longer he's not being mentioned in any type of trade talk, the more I worry that he's coming back. Um, and maybe for him that could work, but I don't see it with the front court being less loaded as it is now. Like, what's the benefit of keeping Laurie Markin in here versus him being gone with the current roster makeup that it is right now? Well, I mean, I, the, the benefit will be that you've got a, a – a reliable shooter coming off of your bench. Um, a young guy who still has room to improve, although obviously we haven't seen much improvement, um, you know, kind of tangible improvement. I know the stats will bear out last year that um, he shot better than he ever has uh, from the field and from the three, but, you know, it, it, it shouldn't be lost on Bulls fans and observers that this guy could be – a piece for this team. Um, again, being able to shoot that three, this, this league is, is getting to the point now where if you can't shoot the three, man, you can get taken advantage of pretty quickly, just ask Ben Simmons. Um, so while I don't, I don't, I don't want to see him come back, I don't think it'll be the end of, end of the world if he, if he does. Because uh, he, can, he can still play a role here. He can still play a role here. Um, I, I would prefer for them to get more of a defensive-minded um, big. That's why when the rumors came about him possibly going to um, Dallas for Maxi Cleaver, that would have been awesome because Cleaver can hit the three too, but he's more of a defensive-minded um, big. So we'll see how it plays out. I think I'm I'm really surprised at how drawn out this has been. You know, we we talk a lot around Chicago about how disappointed we are in, in Laurie Markkinen, but um, he is what he is, and he's still a valuable – he can be a valuable piece of the right team, especially one with um, a good point guard running the show. So, 
I don't know, man. I think the tampering, the tampering investigation is probably holding some things up too. Maybe some teams are scared to to uh, negotiate right now, um, not knowing where the NBA is going to go with that. But you know, don't don't get too don't get too worked up if he ends up back with the Bulls. Um, I believe if he signs that qualifying offer, um, it comes with a no trade clause. Uh, but you know. He still has something to play for, you know. He might be, you know, sour apples or whatever, but he still has something to play for. He still wants to have to drive up his stock that is, you know, as low as shooters was, <laughs> than the shooters was. But um, yeah, man, it won't be the worst thing in the world. It won't be. It won't be. It won't be Felicio on the bench, you know. Definitely. Won't be. <laughs> I mean, that's true. That is true. We ain't got to worry about someone collecting almost. 10 to 15 million dollars per year on the bench by doing nothing. I mean, I get that. That that that's a good move. That, that that's definitely <laughs> different. However, do you think him bringing him back considering the fact that he has made it pretty much known I want a fresh start. I don't want to be here. Um and the Bulls are pretty much in the same boat with him although they sent the qualifying offer to me to me just because they want to make sure they get something in return for him potentially in a sign and trade. They don't want to just let him to go for nothing. But I think, you know, it's mutual on both ends that they, they probably want to create a fresh start. If you bring him back, how much of an impact do you think that will have negatively on the chemistry of this of, of, of the roster, especially since they made all these moves with new faces, new top-tier talent, and a front court that, you know, Laurie and Pat was competing for playing time last year. Um, you got a new center in Troy Badley. You got Vooch there. You know, these guys are going to be taking up a lot of tick, a lot of time from Laurie that he already said from the jump, I'm a starter. I need starter minutes and starter money. So do you think that can mess up the chemistry of what the Bulls' current roster is now and – can the Bulls actually fight that off? Can they actually create that balance? So, I mean, it's, it's, it wouldn't be ideal. Don't get me wrong. It's, it wouldn't be ideal um, for him to come back, for the Bulls to, to bring him back. It'll be awkward for sure. But even, you know, you, you can want whatever you want, but the market is telling you that you're not worth the amount of money that you thought you were. And you're probably not right now a starter like you thought you were. You, you have a lot of proving that you need to do, which is why I don't think it would be um, as big of a distraction as it might be, you know, if he was a different player, um, a different personality. Like he's not the type, he hasn't been or shown to be the type of guy who's going to rock the boat. Um, even when he lost his starting spot last year, he didn't, that I recall, he didn't uh, mope or anything like that. He didn't whine, anything like that. He still went out there and played. Had some pretty good games, too, um, at times. Again, kind of how, how his career went. But um, I think there's there's there's, re there's, more, there's more reason for them to break up, but there is still or can still be reasons for them to stay together and make that work for however long it takes to, to, get, off of, to get off of him or – to part ways officially, um, maybe before the next trade deadline or next summer. So pretty much we got to make sure that they these, these two go through some counseling. Okay, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, this is clearly I think this is a marriage that's on the way to divorce. But you know, you have that counseling session, those mm -hmm. counseling sessions to, to give it one last hope. Mm -hmm. It's like you want to get to the end of the road, but not too, but not yet. Like yeah. I feel like that's where we are at with the situation. And it's like they're trying to establish who the side piece is going to come in to become their new wife versus, <laughs> versus you know, I'm going to tolerate this and, sit with no, and then be single for a while before I jump back into the pool. I think they're trying to get that replacement and that side piece to come in right there to fill in so that yeah. once he's gone, I'm off to my new marriage. <laughs> like, I feel like that's what's really going on right now with this Bulls thing. Yeah, I mean – I don't know, man. Winning, winning is a hell of a therapist. <laughs> Just saying, man. <laughs> it is, but at the same time, when you, when you, when that person got to go, that person got to go. Ask Shaq. 
Um, <laughs> at Shaq. Everybody listening right now, you're listening to uh, sports beat writer, senior writer, you name it. The maestro himself, Drew Holden. Uh, Drew, coming off marriages, I want, we, we decided to have a new marriage with Ayo Desumu, who is, you know, the hometown kid, Morgan Park, state champion, U of I, All-American. Uh, he just does it all, right? And now that you bring him into Chicago, um, he, he, to me, from what I saw in Summer League, he's a right now ready player. Um, he is a player that can give you the most with what he has right now. And he's a, uh, and, and once he gets into the groove of the offense and offensive flow, he can actually be a very beneficial asset to this team. Um, where can you see his fit right now with the Bulls and his current roster, especially since you still have guys like Kobe White that's coming off rehab with his shoulder. Um, you got Alex Caruso automatically coming off the bench. Like, what's what can he do? with this current Bulls roster right now as they prepare for this upcoming season? So I think the, the main thing is his defense. I think um, aside from anything else, that's probably the, the, the biggest impact he can have, maybe as a, a third string guard um, coming off that bench, depending on what, you know, when when Kobe White comes back and, and what position they want to settle him into. Um, but like you said, he's he's seems to be ready-made for the league. I know a lot of a lot of Bulls fans were, were upset that the Bulls didn't jump on Sharif Cooper. We spoke to Ricky O'Donnell of SB Nation. He was he was kind of on that on that on that train as well. Um, but I had to respectfully disagree with him, just given that you know the Bulls they gambled last year with, with Patrick Williams. There's only so many gambles you can take when you're when you're a front office who's trying to build toward um, relevance and getting the franchise or the team back to the playoffs. You know you had to you had to make more of a, I hate to use the term, but more of a safer pick. Um, you know, Ayo is, 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 is well, he's a skillful, he's a skilled guy, a skilled player. Um, he's a, he's a shot maker. You know, he's got some things he's got to prove on the court, just like the rest of his rookie class uh, mates do. But um, I think it was a smart pick for them. And um, it fits, it fit really well with the type of players that AK and, and Eversley were looking to bring in. What about the new uh, the new Spaniard? I forgot his name. Marco Manovich. Yeah, something like yeah. One of his one of those guys that we drafted last year, but he didn't play. He's overseas, so now he's here this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually liked what I saw from him this summer league. From when you when you talk about being a big man that is smart and intelligent with a high IQ, and he knows what to do when he gets the basketball, whether to shoot the ball or read the defense to make the right pass coming from the block or coming off of ball screen. See, I, I think, I feel like his ability to stretch the floor while also being able to be smart with the basketball is a good component to have when you're paired with a Vucevic or when you're paired or even coming off the bench with uh, filling in for Vucevic, who is very similar um, from a skill set perspective. Do you, how, how much of an impact do you think that, uh, he can have um, when it comes to bolstering the bench while also doing something that we actually expected out of Lori Martin. <laughs> I, I, w- I would temper my expectations on him a little bit. I was impressed with um, kind of what seemed to be his natural basketball instincts, like you said, just the passing um, as well as the, the kind of seeking out contact. You know, I love to see that from from guys, international guys. That's long been a stigma that's probably dead right now, uh, rightfully so. You know, these guys coming over here, um, they're not the soft guys that, you know, the Tony Ku coaches of the world were classified as back in the early 90s. Um, so from that point, of, that standpoint, I'm, I'm anxious to see what he can do, but I'm worried about how he'll fit into the Bulls' defense, um, especially the drop coverage that, uh, Donovan likes to run, um, as well as his ability to kind of power through more of those big, bigger bodies in the lane when he gets the ball down there. Um, and his shot looked, looked a little bit flat. So I don't, maybe that's just fatigue, too. I think he had just finished playing um, overseas just before the summer league. So 
you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be gung ho about him coming in and doing what a lot of people expect the marketing to do. But just like just like Io, just natural progressions throughout the year you want to see from these guys, see them grow and get better and hopefully be able to become regular contributors to the team. Because we we definitely need it in that front court. Um, whereas last year we were kind of uh, short on, you know, backcourt and winged up. Now it's kind of flip flop. So we're gonna need it. We're gonna need it up front. So obviously, there's been many spectators that have actually, even though they've given the Bulls their props, they've also said, "Well, they may be in the middle of the pack of the East. They might, you know, don't don't over." Don't overhype it just because you got DeRose in there with Zach Levine and Lonzo Ball, right? They've been trying to say they may hit the seventh seed or something like that. I'm going all out and saying they can at least at least get six. I'm saying they don't even need to be playing in being a play in tournament. They should be able to get that sixth seed at at the at, at least to make this huge playoff run. And they have the potential of being at least a second round team. Very similar to what the Knicks did this year. Um or even better, potentially. Am I crazy? Am I crazy? No, not at all. Not at all. I, I think um, I think my my floor for them was like eight, but their ceiling could be you know as high as, as four. You know, depending on how these other teams, um, what happens with these other teams. You know, Ben Simmons in Philadelphia, how things work out with with Larry and in, in, in Miami, how that meshes together. Um, you know, how, how New York does in a second season on the Thibs, you know, a coach who who I, I I admire, but who runs his, you know, can run his players to the ground pretty quickly. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how things go. There's, there's like a big jumble of teams after after Milwaukee, after um, Brooklyn, after Miami, maybe Philly, like the Hawks, Knicks. Um, you know what? No, I'm not even going to say the Hawks. I'm going to say the, the Knicks, the Bulls. Um, the Celtics, the Pacers, Washington, maybe. I like the moves they made. I was a little when when they first traded um, Westbrook. I was saying, oh, we we definitely gonna leapfrog Washington, but they got some nice pieces, man. But I don't know how it's gonna how it's gonna things will shake out for them. But they look kind of deep on paper. Um, so it's it, it could be you know a matter of two three games throughout the regular season that separates that that cluster of teams kind of in the middle of the pack there. Okay, because I was gonna say, so we're not gonna, so we're not gonna disrespect Trey Young and Ice Cold Trey, right? No, no, no. Fox, right? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that was your boy, man. I had to back it up real quick. Me, I took, yeah. I took it from to my credit. I took him out of that that bunch. I okay. took him out. Took okay. him out. I had to make sure because you know what? Ice Trey, still <laughs> Ice Trey now, like <laughs> cold blooded in this league, man. Because um, I think, because I, I do think that there is something to be said for. John Collins having his contract now and not having to go through a season, you know, with that in the back of his mind, Trey getting his money. Um, so there's less distraction. So I think they had a bowl well for the Hawks. And not to mention as well, you want to talk about Sharif. Sharif's out there with a, with a trade too now. <laughs> True. That, True. That's, that's going to be a little nasty that the Hawks are continue to add young talent yeah. to their core. And um, it's very interesting to see how – Obviously, last year they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals, which is a shocker to everybody. You wonder if I didn't, I don't think they'll make that deep of a run this year, but you can see maybe they can at least get back to that second round, depending on where the standings are in the Eastern Conference, because they're they're no joke to play with. And Nate McMillan has showed that yeah, he's had playoff struggles. This team's different, and this and the way he's coached this team, it seemed like they were all bought in, and to have a leader like Trey Young. And you got and you're bringing back the main core to run it back. That trust Nate McMillan, who you have signed now to a longer term deal. I think Atlanta's brewing something up pretty good down there in the A. And and you can't. I'm just interested to see what they're going to do moving forward um, yeah, me, with this core. Me too. It's just very well, just very well put together and and, and built around Trey Young. They, they did a great job of that uh, last summer, and it it, it bore out. Uh, this season, like you said, there were some some bounces, some some things that went their way, which have to go every team's way uh, for them to be able to advance in the playoffs. But um, very much looking forward to seeing what they do in you know this this upcoming season. Yeah, and 
not to mention uh, for me, everybody listening right now, you're listening to Drew Holden. Um, the, the league came out with their schedules. Um, they released the Christmas Day schedule as well as opening night. And I must say that, and I, and I, as much as I love the way the schedules looked, I just thought it was utter blasphemy. <laughs> just not to not put the Bulls in any of those primetime nights. I mean, just just from a headlines perspective alone, the, there was a recent report that came out, I think it was Bleach Report, that said the Bulls have a top 10 big three lineup. Yep. And you telling me you don't have none of that on your prime time? <laughs> like, how disrespectful can you be? Like, I'm just like, if in my Stephen A, this is just blasphemous. I cannot believe the blasphemy <laughs> that has come from this league. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, how could you not showcase that? I, help it make sense to me. Help it make sense, Drew. So, I mean, I, I definitely hope that DeRozan and Levine and the rest of their guys are taking it as disrespect. Um, as well as the other stuff we spoke about earlier and uh, them getting the Rosen as being the worst move um, of the offseason. I want them to take all that as disrespect. Um, it was interesting to me that they didn't make – I thought for sure they get a Christmas Day game against maybe the Knicks. I'm not, I'm not so not so thrown off with them not getting the open and night game. You really got to be one of the top teams in the league to, to pull that off, and we know that they have not been – and probably will not be that this upcoming year. Um, but for them not to get like a like an opening week national nationally televised game, or not to be put in there on Christmas Day against the Knicks, which I thought that would have been awesome, man. You know, two of the the bigger franchises in the in the league, bigger markets, who have you know kind of made moves to improve themselves and get back into the conversation. New York is a year ahead of us, but still, um, it, it was weird. It was weird, especially given that. You know, the amount of moves that the Bulls made, they were pretty much, I want to say, it felt like they were the most active team um, in free agency or in the offseason. So that was strange, but just just take it as disrespect, fellas, and, and use that as more fuel to, to do the things that you're trying to do because there's a lot of bullets and board material or should be in that locker room. Not to mention, Zach Levine. <laughs> Dude just came off a gold medal run. A team USA and played well. Like he actually played very well and was one of the key components to that championship, to that gold medal team, said by its leader, Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant talks about him so much, I almost wrote an article about why he should come to Chicago. Like, I, I, I thought he was making the pitch about why he should come to Chicago. So it's like, how can the respect be that? I just can't, I just cannot fathom how disrespectful. This league is being to Zach Levine and to the Bulls as a whole with all the moves that they're making. But like you said, you know, we should we should utilize this as fuel for fire. Go go blazing next year and prove so many people wrong that they have to look at their that that roster board and that TV board and be like, dang, we're gonna have to make sure that at least we can switch some things out potentially, because uh we can't give them open at night. We can't give them Christmas. We can at least give them more TNT primetime games. We're the TNT team of the decade. I mean, come on now. We barely lose on TNT as a franchise, man. Give us at least that much respect, right? Like, yeah. I, I, I don't I don't get it, man. But that's why they are the people that get paid to do what they do, and we get paid to do what we do, analyze the critique. So, <laughs> so with, with, that, with that being said, man, you said the Bulls can be – as a ceiling fourth seed in the Eastern Conference. What are the things you're gonna be what are the things you're gonna be paying attention to the most about this Bulls team as they strive for a deep playoff run next year? Um I'm I'm gonna be watching I, I know we talked about them not being a, a ball centric team, um being more based off uh ball moving and player moving, but I wanna see if 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 kind of the Rosen is the is the uh the, the straw that stirs the drink more so than not um, in the half court for the Bulls. Um, I want to see how him and Zach play off of each other, how Patrick Williams progresses in, in the role, the different role now that he has with this team, um, how he learns to play off of Vooch, um, 
how they look in pick and roll, how uh, the Rosen and Levine look in pick and rolls with Vucevic and how defensive play that. Because uh, I think that's 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 going to be a hell of a component to that offense with, uh, you know, we talked about the Rosen not being a three-point shooter, but the NBA plays a lot of drop coverage, and that's going to leave him open for a lot of those mid-range jumpers he loves to take. And if they step up on him, you got to dump off to Vooch. You possibly got a, a swing cross court to Zach, or maybe if he's on that same strong side or Pat. It's just a lot of things that, that I think Donovan will have at his disposal this year to get the most out of that offense. You know, I think it's been um, kind of thrown out there that the Bulls can have a top five, top ten offense. It's just going to be what they are able to accomplish on the defensive end um, of the floor, which is something else I'll be paying attention to. How, you know, <laughs> Can they bend but not break on that side of the ball? You know, can they do enough to stay in games and finish games off? It's, it's going to be interesting to see. I think I, I saw a stat that Donovan's teams, the teams he's coached, haven't finished any lower than 12th defensively. So that's, you know, that 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 gives you something to kind of hang your hat on for anybody that's that's kind of worried about what this big three, who's not really known for their defense, what that might mean. Uh, on that side of the ball, but it's, it's so much, not to mention, you know, the small ball lineups, how that might look, who's going to be on the court, um, who's not going to be on the court, uh, how Donovan might stagger minutes between Levine and DeRozan. It's just, it's a lot, man. I can keep going on and on, man, but I don't, <laughs> I don't want to kill the time here. Nah, you're good, man. You're good. <laughs> and, that, and it's all good points that you've mentioned. I think for me, on top of everything you've mentioned, for me, I'm going to check out and see how does Kobe, Kobe White come back from his injury. This is his third year now. He's not going to be – he's going to be – his role's going to be minimized because of Lonzo Ball's presence being there now and potentially maybe even Alex Caruso potentially playing backup point guard. Mm -hmm. um, so with Kobe White coming off the bench, you know, he's going to share minutes. He's going to earn more minutes if he really wants it. But he'll be back in a more comfortable role for him, which is not effectively running an offense, but being more of a scoring guard that we know he can be. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I want to see, especially since he's coming, going to be coming off of rehab with that shoulder injury and that shoulder surgery that he's had, I want to see how he comes back from that and how does he live up to the role and expectation that the Bulls have for him, especially since last year. They pretty much gave him the keys and said, here, run the show. And we saw how that, how that went. Mm -hmm. um, so... I'm, I'm interested to see how Kobe is going to bounce back from last season and how he prepares to move forward this year with this new ro new roster, especially since now he's going to be probably the more comfortable role that he was accustomed to yeah. last season at this time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, like you said, though, because it, because the moves that the Bulls made kind of puts him back into more of a familiar role or uh, I guess the position you, you would say he's best suited to play, I think it takes pressure off of him, man. I really, I really do, and I think that's going to help him um, get better and and be a better weapon for this team. I can see him and Caruso being on the floor at the same time, actually. You know, so I'm looking. That's not something else I'm looking forward to. Um, I don't think we really got a, a set timetable yet on or any updates on when he may come back from that injury. Um, I think there's a chance that he may miss a, miss a little bit of the uh, opening month of the regular season, but it's just, you know, he'll be another beneficiary of the moves that the Bulls made. And, uh, you know, I hear some talk about them, say, uh, Bulls Twitter, throwing his name out in trade talks. But I think this would be a terrible time to do that. You don't want to do that now that you got him in, in the spot you want him to be in. You, come on now. <laughs> you, you just took – the burden of having to run the team off of his shoulders, and now he can focus primarily on being able to score and, and do what he does best. This is not the time to entertain those thoughts unless you're getting something crazy back in return. So, yeah, yeah, I I agree with you, and we'll, and it's gonna be interesting to see where the Bulls go this year, especially with all the new moves being made. Fans gonna be back into the arenas. Hopefully, media will be back in the arenas as well. Hopefully, we'll be up in there. You know, with all with with everything going on too, so that way we can witness the the UC back rocking like we know it can be rocking this season. Um, that being said, man, Drew, what you got coming up? You know, for the for the audience and the listeners to listen and tune into. Um, you know, we know you you're a maestro, so y'all got something up your sleeve. 
so what you got what you got coming up man for our audience to pay attention to uh just stay on the lookout for the chicago sports exchanges uh pretty much every monday um early evening they, they're usually released on our war ready substack that's war with two r's everybody um that's pretty much it man you know and, and on top of that just things that provoke me to write you know so just be on the lookout for that um that's pretty much it, man. I feel you, bro. I feel you. I feel you, man. Uh, where can everybody find you on social media? So you can find me on IG and Twitter. Both of my handles there are look what Drew did. I'm available. Hit me up. Let's let's talk some sports, talk some bulls, talk life. It don't even matter, man. Engage with me. <laughs> for real, for real. Because we all know you're going to have the heat to come with it. For sure. <laughs> Um, and then everybody listening right now, you can follow me as a reminder on Twitter and Instagram at Josh M. Hicks Media. Check out for all the latest stuff coming up with War Media at WeAreRegalRadio.com, as well as war, that's WarMedia.Substack.com. Um, got a lot of good things coming your way, um, potentially some new stuff as well from what we've been told, so be on the lookout for that. And, and, and in the meantime, man, Drew... It's been it's, it's been a long time coming, yeah, but I'm glad we got I'm glad I'm finally able to get you on the show, man. Um, looking forward to continuing to work with you yeah, and sure. come up with more content as we get ready for you know football season's coming up. And I think I saw a tweet that NBA preseason starts in six weeks, which is like whoa, <laughs> 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 quick turnaround. So yeah. uh, you know I'm looking forward to. You know, starting well, you know covering the season again with you guys and uh, and with you and having more you know more Bulls NBA talks and mm-hmm. all the all the all the stuff with yeah. sports of uh, upcoming productions that we got coming up. So keep Same doing here, your thing, man. keep doing your thing. Thank you for coming on my show, brother. Yes, Appreciate you. I gotta have you come back, man. Please do, man. It's well worth the wait, man. Like I said, the schedule's just we're off, but. <laughs> It was, like I said, well worth the wait and any time, man. It's a pleasure. Always. For sure, brother. Be easy. Yes, sir.